In second of his book, Foundation, The Foundations of Arithmetics, Frege, Gottlob Frege, is interested in the concept of nature, concept of numbers, natural numbers in general, and arithmetical relations. Because natural numbers and arithmetical relations take a central place in mathematics. There are three questions that Frege asked in this book. First one is the semantic question. What do number terms or numerals refer to? Like in this sentence, there is one natural satellite of Earth. What does one here refer to? This is the semantic part of the book. Ontological question is what is a number? What kind of object it is? Is it a mental object or a physical one or something abstract? Then we have epistemological question. How do we know that 2 plus 2 is 4? Okay, we know that, but how do we justify our belief that 2 plus 2 is 4? Is it by experience, like in natural sciences, or by intuition, or by logic? There are several proposals in the history of mathematics and philosophy for these questions. First one is formalism. According to formalist view, numerals, I mean number terms, do not have any meaning. So they do not refer to anything. Arithmetic is nothing but a rule governed activity. It is just like chess. There is no meaning in it. It is just a rule governed activity. Frege argues against formalism and he claims that it is possible to it is possible to manipulate numerals mechanically just as it is possible to speak like a parrot but that can scarcely be called thinking so numerals must have some meaning in order in order that we call it thinking and the other school of thought is rationalism Rationalism is interested in the epistemological question, how do we know mathematical truths? For Kant, we know mathematical truths or we justify our beliefs in mathematical truths by intuitions. We have intuitions and we grasp their truth by intuitions. So like in this example, 7 plus 5 is 12 is justified by operations of the mind. So for Kant, these are synthetic a priori knowledge. I think you already know this term from your other classes. But Frege asks this question, do I know this equation just by intuition? Is it, is it self-evident or obvious? No, I can only justify this claim by some proof. right? So then this claim is provable. This is not synthetic a priori judgment, but it is analytic a priori judgment. You remember the distinction between analytic and synthetic judgments. Again, uh, empiricists are also interested in the epistemological question. And for John Stuart Mill, arithmetical truths are induct inductive generalizations. They are just like the truths of natural sciences. We justify truths in natural sciences by inductive generalizations, like three pebbles and two pebbles together make five pebbles, three cows and two cows together make five cows, three men and two men together make five men. So at the end, for me, we generalize these examples and we have this judgment two, three plus two is five. But Frege, first of all, asks this question, then how do we justify our beliefs in zero? With what instantiations we uh, generalize, we inductively arrive at the concept of zero, the number zero. And second one is, as you may realize, in these examples, John Stuart Mill conflates, confuses applied mathematics with pure mathematics. These are these can only be examples from applied mathematics, not pure mathematics. But pure mathematics is the basis of applied mathematics for Frege. Okay, these are Frege's views. 
And psychologism is interested in both epistemological, semantic and ontological uh, questions. For psychologism, numbers are ideas in our minds. They are just psychological processes. Or you may say they are just physical processes, neurochemical processes in our brains. But Frege says that there is a difference between an object and my idea of that object. Like, right, there is America, there is this continent, but there is also my idea of that continent. These are two different things. Right, and similarly, my idea of a number and a number itself are different entities. Then mathematics is like geography. In mathematics, mathematicians discover truths rather than inventing imaginary truths, rather or rather than inventing their own subjective truths. Another view is more linguistically oriented, is that numbers might be properties of objects. Because in these examples, the syntactic role of number terms like in three in three apples two in two cows a hundred in a hundred years one in one century look like red in red apples short in short man smart in smart students smart students right so then numbers might be properties of objects right in for example in this example right apples three is the property of apples. But Frege rejects this view as well and uh, he claims that same objects can be designated with different objects, different numbers. For example, Iliad is one poem or 24 books. So then which one is the property of Iliad? One or 24? Right, in this case, it is 1, in this one, in this designation, it is 24. So then, numbers cannot be properties of objects, because an object's property does not change by a change in the way we designate those objects. Then, what is Frege's own theory for numbers? What is his notion of numbers? In the first place, for Frege, we need conceptualization to understand numbers. We need the ability of conceptualization in order to talk about numbers. A pile of cards, right, that's an entity, can be thought of as one pack or as 52 cards. We have two different conceptualization. Pack stands for one conceptualization and cards is another conceptualization. If we choose this con this conceptualization, we have this number one here, and for this conceptualization cards, we have the number fifty two. So depending on the conceptualization, we have different numbers. So then numbers must be about concepts. What is a concept? Technically, it is a function from objects to truth values. We will see this in the in uh, we will see this uh, in detail in uh, Frege's article Function and Concept. So, for example, briefly, is a philosopher is one concept, right? Under this concept, Frege falls, Socrates falls, Aristotle falls, Wittgenstein falls, right? Is a president is another concept. Trump falls under this concept, but Aristotle does not fall under this concept. We have a notation. This is a modern notation. This is not this is not the notation that Frege used. This is lambda notation we, uh, to represent concepts. Lambda x, x is a philosopher, stands for the concept of being a philosopher. Because when you just write x is a philosopher, it means that somebody is philosopher, it's not concept, but if you add lambda x here, then you abstract the concept from the 
expression. So lambda x, x is a philosopher, is a concept. This is a concept. Similarly, lambda x, x is a president, is a concept. You can build your own concept, lambda x, x is a student in field 442 class. Or x is a smart student in field 442 class. Okay, this is lambda notation for concepts. So numbers are about these concepts. For example, in this example, Venus has no moons. We have a number, right? Venus has zero moons. They have same meaning. So zero is about a concept. And what is that concept? Lambda x, x is a moon of Venus. Zero is about the concept of being a moon of Venus. How many objects fall under concept C or concept X is the moon of Venus? Zero object falls, right? So zero is about this concept. Or zero is about how many King France has? Zero, right? So then zero is about the concept lambda X. X is a King of France. So zero belongs to the concept lambda x, x is a moon of Venus. This belongs, does not mean that zero is a member of this concept. It means that zero is about, zero is the property of that concept. In general, the number zero belongs to a concept, any concept. If whatever A, whatever an entity A may be, the proposition holds universally that A does not fall under that concept. It means that the number zero belongs to a concept, and under that concept, no object falls. Any concept. Moon of Venus, present king of France, present king of United States, present king of Turkey, no object falls under these concepts, right? So zero is about these concepts. Zero belongs to those concepts. More formally, zero, the number zero belongs to a concept F0, such that any concept F0, such that there exists zero object that is F, that falls under F. This is numerical quantifier in first order logic notation. We have this, okay, for all x, no object falls under F. So we have same definition for number one. The number one belongs to a concept F. If whatever A may be, the proposition does not hold universally that A does not fall under F. And if from the propositions A falls under F and B falls under F, it follows universally that A and B are the same. So it means that the number one belongs to a concept and under that concept, Exactly one object falls. This long statement is just saying exactly one object falls. First part says at least one object falls. And the second part says at most one object falls under this concept. So at the end, the number one belongs to a concept. Under that concept, there ex exactly one object falls. Formally, the number 1 belongs to a concept F1 such that, any concept F1 such that, there exists 1x numerical quantifier again, okay? This is the notation in numerical quantifier, and this is its translation into first order logic without numerical quantifiers. You can check it by yourself. You remember this, I think, from your philosophy of language or logic courses. And number N1 in general is recursively defined the number n plus 1 belongs to the concept f if there is an object a that does not fall under a concept to which number n belongs to okay we can define n plus n plus 1 by number n number n belongs to a concept and add one other object to that concept then that concept is the concept number n plus 1 belongs to. Formal definition is here. This must be n plus 1, sorry. n plus 1 numerical quantifier. And this is...